American Civil War prison camps were operated by both the Union and the Confederacy to handle the 409,000 soldiers captured during the war from 1861 to 1865. The Record and Pension Office in 1901 counted 211,000 Northerners who were captured. In 1861–63 most were immediately paroled, after the parole exchange system broke down in 1863, about 195,000 went to prison camps. Some tried to escape but few succeeded. By contrast 464,000 Confederates were captured many in the final days and 215,000 imprisoned. Over 30,000 Union and nearly 26,000 Confederate prisoners died in captivity. Just over 12% of the captives in northern prisons died, compared to 15.5% for southern prisons. <laughs> Parole Lacking means for dealing with large numbers of captured troops early in the American Civil War, the Union and Confederate governments both relied on the traditional European system of parole and exchange of prisoners. A prisoner who was on parole promised not to fight again until his name was exchanged for a similar man on the other side. Then both of them could rejoin their units. While awaiting exchange, prisoners were briefly confined to permanent camps. The exchange system broke down in mid-1863 when the Confederacy refused to treat captured black prisoners as equal to white prisoners. The prison populations on both sides then soared. There were 32 major Confederate prisons, 16 of them in the Deep South states of Georgia, Alabama, and South Carolina. Training camps were often turned into prisons, and new prisons also had to be made. The North had a much larger population than the South, and Gen. Ulysses S. Grant was well aware that keeping its soldiers in northern prisons hurt the southern economy and war effort. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Prisoner exchanges. At the outbreak of the war, the federal government avoided any action, including prisoner exchanges, that might be viewed as official recognition of the Confederate government in Richmond. Public opinion forced a change after the First Battle of Bull Run, when the Confederates captured over 1,000 Union soldiers. Union and Confederate forces exchanged prisoners sporadically, often as an act of humanity between opposing commanders. Support for prisoner exchanges grew throughout the initial months of the war, as the North saw increasing numbers of its soldiers captured. Petitions from prisoners in the South and editorials in Northern newspapers brought pressure on the Lincoln administration. On December 11, 1861, the U.S. Congress passed a joint resolution calling on President Lincoln to "...inaugurate systematic measures for the exchange of prisoners in the present rebellion." In two meetings on February 23 and March 1, 1862, Union Major Gen. John E. Wool and Confederate Brig. General Howell Cobb met to reach an agreement on prisoner exchanges. They discussed many of the provisions later adopted in the Dix Hill Agreement. However, differences over which side would cover expenses for prisoner transportation stymied the negotiations. Topic: <laughs> Dix Hill Cartel of 1862. Prison camps were largely empty in mid 1862 thanks to the informal exchanges. Both sides agreed to formalize the system. Negotiations resumed in July 1862, when Union Maj. Gen. John A. Dix and Confederate Maj. Gen. D. H. Hill were assigned the task. The agreement established a scale of equivalence for the exchange of military officers and enlisted men. Thus a Navy captain or an Army colonel was worth 15 privates or ordinary seamen, while personnel of equal ranks were exchanged man for man. Each government appointed an agent to handle the exchange and parole of prisoners. The agreement also allowed the exchange of non-combatants, such as citizens accused of disloyalty, and civilian employees of the military, and allowed the informal exchange or parole of captives between the commanders of the opposing forces. Authorities were to parole any prisoners not formally exchanged within ten days following their capture. The terms of the cartel prohibited paroled prisoners from returning to the military in any capacity including the performance of field, garrison, police, or guard, or constabulary duty. <laughs> End of exchanges 
The exchange system collapsed in 1863 because the Confederacy refused to treat black prisoners the same as whites. They said they were probably ex-slaves and belonged to their masters, not to the Union Army. The South needed the exchanges much more than the North did, because of the severe manpower shortage in the Confederacy. In 1864 Ulysses Grant, noting the "'prisoner gap' Union camps held far more prisoners than Confederate camps, decided that the growing prisoner gap gave him a decided military advantage. He therefore opposed wholesale exchanges until the end was in sight. Around 5,600 Confederates were allowed to join the Union Army. Known as galvanized Yankees, these troops were stationed in the West facing Native Americans. Around 1,600 former Union troops joined the Confederate Army. Prisoner exchanges resumed early in 1865, just before the war's end, with the Confederates sending 17,000 prisoners north while receiving 24,000 men. On April 23, after the war ended, the riverboat Sultana was taking 1,900 ex-prisoners north on the Mississippi River when it exploded, killing about 1,500 of them. Death rates The overall mortality rates in prisons on both sides were similar, and quite high. Many southern prisons were located in regions with high disease rates, and were routinely short of medicine, doctors, food and ice. Northerners often believed their men were being deliberately weakened and killed in Confederate prisons, and demanded that conditions in northern prisons be equally harsh, even though shortages were not a problem in the north. About 56,000 soldiers died in prisons during the war, accounting for almost 10% of all Civil War fatalities. During a period of 14 months in Camp Sumter, located near Andersonville, Georgia, 13,000 of the 45,000 Union soldiers confined there died. At Camp Douglas in Chicago, Illinois, 10% of its Confederate prisoners died during one cold winter month, and Elmira Prison in New York State, with a death rate of 25%, very nearly equaled that of Andersonville. <laughs> Main camps <laughs> See also Prisoner of War Camp, Worldwide History Henry Wirtz, Commander at Andersonville, Executed for War Crimes Parole Camp Notes Bibliography General Burnham, Philip so Far From Dixie, Confederates in Yankee Prisons 2003, Butts, Michelle Tucker. Galvanized Yankees on the Upper Missouri, The Face of Loyalty 2003, Confederate POWs Who Joined the U.S. Army Current, Richard N. et al., eds. Encyclopedia of the Confederacy 1993, reprinted in the Confederacy, Macmillan Information Now Encyclopedia 1998, articles on Prisoners of War and Prisons Gillespie, James M. Andersonville's of the North, The Myths and Realities of Northern Treatment of Civil War Confederate Prisoners 2012, excerpt and text search Heseltine, William B. Civil War Prisons, A Study in War Psychology, Ohio State University Press, 1930 Heseltine, William B. The Propaganda Literature of Confederate Prisons, Journal of Southern History 1935-1 No. 1 pp. 56-66 in JSTOR Pickenpa, Roger. Captives in Blue, The Civil War Prisons of the Confederacy 2013 excerpt and text search Pickenpa, Roger. Captives in Gray, The Civil War Prisons of the Union 2009 Rhodes, James Ford Rhodes 1904. History of the United States from the Compromise of 1850-1864-1866. Harper and Brothers. pp. 483-508 Vol. 4 Chains 29, for an impartial account, another copy online Robbins, Glenn. Race, Repatriation, and Galvanized Rebels, Union Prisoners and the Exchange Question in Deep South Prison Camps, Civil War History 2007-53 No. 2 pp. 117-140 in Project Muse Sanders, Charles W., Jr. 
While in the hands of the enemy, military prisons of the Civil War, Louisiana State University Press, 2005 Speer, Lonnie R. Portals to Hell, Military Prisons of the Civil War, 1997. Speer, Lonnie. War of Vengeance, Acts of Retaliation Against Civil War POWs. Stackpole Books, 2002. Topic specific camps Arnold Scriber, Teresa and Terry G. Scriber. Ship Island, Mississippi, Rosters and History of the Civil War Prison McFarland, 2012 Excerpt and Text Search Byrne, Frank L., Libby Prison, A Study in Emotions, Journal of Southern History 1958-24 4, 430-444, in JSTOR Stevens, Francis. George W. Alexander and Castle Thunder, A Confederate Prison and Its Commandant, McFarland, 2004 Davis, Robert Scott. Ghosts and Shadows of Andersonville, Essays on the Secret Social Histories of America's Deadliest Prison Mercer University Press, 2006 310 pp Fetzer Jr., Dale and Bruce E. Mowdy. Unlikely Allies, Fort Delaware's Prison Community in the Civil War Stackpole Books, 2002 Genoways, Ted and Hugh H. Genoways eds, A Perfect Picture of Hell, Eyewitness Accounts by Civil War Prisoners from the 12th Iowa, U of Iowa Press, 2001. Gray, Michael P. The Business of Captivity in the Chemung Valley, Elmira and its Civil War Prison 2001 online Hesiltine William B., ed. Civil War Prisons 1972-123 pp reprints among others, Futch, Ovid. Prison Life at Andersonville, Civil War History 1962-8 No. 2 pp. 121-135 McLean, Minor H. The Military Prison at Fort Warren, Civil War History 1962-8 No. 2 pp. 135-151. Robertson, James I, Jr. The Scourge of Elmira, Civil War History 1962-8 No. 2 pp. 184-201. Walker, T.R. Rock Island Prison Barracks, Civil War History 1962-8 No. 2 pp. 152-163. Hesseltine, William B. Andersonville Revisited. The Georgia Review 1956-10 No. 1 pp. 92-101 in JSTOR Horrigan, Michael. Elmira, Death Camp of the North, Stackpole Books, 2002 Levy, George. To Die in Chicago, Confederate Prisoners at Camp Douglas, 1862-65, 2nd ed. 1999 Excerpt and Text Search. Marvel, William. Andersonville, The Last Depot University of North Carolina Press, 1994 McAdams, Benton. Rebels at Rock Island, The Story of a Civil War Prison 2000 Richardson, Rufus B. Andersonville, New Englander and Yale Review November 1880 39 No. 157 pp. 729-774 Online Treb, Richard H. Fort Fisher to Elmira, The Fateful Journey of 518 Confederate Soldiers. CreateSpace, 2011. Wagoner, Jesse. The Role of the Physician, Eugene Sanger and a Standard of Care at the Elmira Prison Camp, Journal of the History of Medicine and Allied Sciences 2008-63 No. 1 pp 1-22, Sanger reportedly boasted of killing enemy soldiers Whelan, Joseph. Libby Prison Breakout, The Daring Escape from the Notorious Civil War Prison. New York, Public Affairs, 2010. Topic. Historiography Chesson, Michael B. Prison Camps and Prisoners of War. In Stephen E. Woodworth, ed. The American Civil War, 1996, 466-78, Good Review of Published Studies, online. Cloyd, Benjamin G. Haunted by Atrocity, Civil War Prisons in American Memory Louisiana State University Press, 2010 272 pages. Traces shifts in Americans' views of the brutal treatment of soldiers in both Confederate and Union prisons, from raw memories in the decades after the war to a position that deflected responsibility, excerpt and text search Robbins, Glenn. Andersonville in History and Memory Georgia Historical Quarterly 2011-95 No. 3, pp 408-422, Extended Review of Cloyd, 2010. Topic. Fiction Contour, McKinley. Andersonville, 1956, a novel that won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction. 
Topic: <laughs> Primary sources. One reports from Harper's Weekly 1863 to 64, illustrated. Two Civil War research database search for individual soldiers. Three Chandler's 1864 Confederate report, the single most important original document. From Official Records Series. E. Volume V. pp. 546-551 4 Extracts from the minutes of proceedings of the Standing Committee of the United States Sanitary Commission Point one eight six four with hair-raising details 5 Appendix to the Report of the Sanitary Commission 1864 Much more detail 6 Trial of Captain Henry Wirtz with documents 7 Ransom, John Andersonville original edition 1881 reprinted as Andersonville diary first person account that greatly exaggerated conditions historians consider it untrustworthy as a primary source 8 Robert H Kellogg life and death in rebel prisons 1866 ch1 9 prison letters from Massachusetts men who died in prison topic <laughs> external links Andersonville National Historic Site at nps.gov, official site. Andersonville, Prisoner of War Camp. A National Park Service Teaching with Historic Places TWHP lesson plan. U.S. Geological Survey Geographic Names Information System, American Civil War Prison Camps. www Guide to Civil War Prisons. 2004.